Hello there guys and welcome, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to be talking why I personally believe we are about to have the most quiet uh, Gladiator Circuit and Balgrand season we have had in a very, very long time. And uh, that I don't think is good for the game. It does come together as a mixture of five or six different things. But uh, as soon as I saw the GC nodes, well, not necessarily as soon as I saw them, as soon as I tried to play GC, it kind of all clicked together that, uh, boy, oh boy, next season Valley Rounds are likely going to be quite empty. And uh, one of the driving factors, obviously, is going to be natural player exhaustion. And that is kind of to be ex expected after... A season like last where you know kabam heavily incentivized people to push with the realm event and uh, therefore this season was likely never going to break any records because a lot of people did go and played more than they normally would in order to get the titan crystal the rest of the milestones in the realm event and you know naturally they kind of will want to take a rest and i think that would be fine in itself however that situation is going to be compounding on several different crucial aspects. And uh, most importantly, it is going to be the nodes themselves. I think this is not going to be an enjoyable meta. I think this is going to be throw your phone against the wall type of meta. Um, and this is going to be like part of a trend recently in the Balgrounds experience. Because obviously, as we all know, last season meta was fine for about six days until the update came. And then a meta that heavily, heavily relied on intercept all of a sudden got uh, extremely frustrating with the new and improved AI. And uh, that ruined season. Those things do matter. The way AI behaves matters a ton. And Kabam could make perfect nodes that are perfectly manageable. But... Uh, if AI is playing like it currently is, doing impossible things that it never should be doing, parrying you on a whim, landing all the intercepts at once, dexing special attacks, skipping frames, all that stuff, it makes the base experience of the game significantly less enjoyable, but that's amplified in a setting like Battlegrounds, where you're trying to get the points where is, there is that competitive aspect facing other players. And, and the frustration is quite real. Last season, I couldn't stream more for an hour or so before my nerves were kind of dead because I was consistently frustrated. Uh, and yeah, it, it was very hard to kind of like keep going streaming, putting up the face for like more than an hour. Hour and 20 minutes, I was like, God, ugh, you just won't swear all the time. But... AI is not the focus of today's video, nor is the fact that there's going to be natural exhaustion. What I do think is going to be the final nail in the coffin is, is going to be the nodes and the meta. And uh, the power gain is just insane. <laughs> it really is. I've done quite a lot of um, friendlies so far on my live streams with the viewers and tested out several champions. I will be making the MVP videos for Victory Track and for Gladiator Circuit because there have been some quite surprising and interesting finds too. But this meta is kind of exemplified most with, unless you have just about the perfect counter, the one or two champions you have in the deck to counter some of the problem defenders, you just can die because every single tough defender here is on steroids with the spite and placebo buffs to a point where you cannot reliably activate special attacks yourself to activate the fate seal to kind of play this meta the way it was intended the thought process behind this meta isn't even the worst one i can kind of appreciate it in theory where Kabam is heavily incentivizing a special spam from you and you being aggressive so you can keep up the fate seal, keeping buffs away from both of the champions, therefore neutralizing spite. The problem is the spite power gain is just too powerful, especially when you combine it together with either Mystic Dispersion or other natural power gain effects, or quite simply for champions with long special attack animations. And, and that showed up immediately. And again, I don't want to be like, you know, 
the world is coming to the crash with this meta type guy are overly negative. Because as I'm saying, I can appreciate what they were going for because in theory, it actually makes for an interesting premise where you're heavily incentivized to spam your special attacks, be as aggressive as you can, deal with opponent's special attacks, special one, special two buys, the best you can, and be great. Again, it just doesn't work. It doesn't work because spite doesn't get paused during opponent's special attacks. That power gain is just too powerful when you go up against champions like Onslaught, for instance. It's just about infinite level one spam. Champions like Bullseye are, you know, significantly harder to deal with as well with far fewer counters. And Chantress is just about, you know, unbeatable. And then we have Serpent, where unless you have Chavez, you're just just about dead as well and uh yeah combination of kabam's recent influx of insane defenders combined with this power gain again makes so so many of the matches just unwinnable and again in my own personal kind of experience i could bear through with this meta and play it to a similar engagement level but it is undeniable that it is extremely frustrating and this is going to make this significantly more RNG dependent. For instance, like previously, Onslaught, if you knew how to fight Onslaught, you can take Onslaught with like, you know, 20, 10 different champions in your deck. Right now, there are like three viable counters to Onslaught. You can America Chavez, the Onslaught, if you play well enough and you get the purple dimensions up to reverse the spite. You can Starkey Onslaught, Starkey works fine. I think Red Guardian works decently. And then there's Havoc. Like unless you have one of those options, you're dead. Similarly to Atuma. Atuma gets more power, he's spamming specials, he goes unstoppable. If you try to get rid of the unstoppable by parrying, he gets a lot more concussions and you take a lot more damage and you kind of screwed. So Enchantress spamming her specials, not giving you any time to get rid of her spells and you end up taking a ton of damage. Just all there is to it and uh, bullseye infinite level one spam with infinite await basically and those are the realistic situations you are forced in again unless you have like one of the very very few select options and again you could say like use buff immune champions but we have like four or five of those in the game like two or three of them are good for bgs in general like Ant-Man is not a great BG attacker by no means, for instance, and not that many people have or will rank him up. And then Cassie is getting completely screwed by AI. I'm still trying to use her, but, you know, it's also more frustrating than it should. And then you have, like, uh, Red Guardian, who does well, uh, and Titania. But they can't take all the matchups. Then, again, your other option is some sort of form of power control, but even that is not working great. And I, I, I just think Bam's doing a very poor job with BG Metas, especially, especially in combination with the AI issues, especially in combination with the natural exhaustion that people have. If there was like one month when Kabam needed like a very thoughtful meta that was fairly open, not frustrating, that players were enjoying you. Some people would call them like nuke metas or something like that. This was it. And I think it's one of the problems often with Kabam. They have like very little common sense. As in like they're getting high on their own supply and they do not put themselves in the shoes of the players and the sentiment of the community. Nowhere near enough. And uh, I, I think this is just going to period again. Now, you might think that I'm completely wrong on my take, but if you do so, then do me a favor. If you're watching this video now, um, remind yourself about this video in about one week's time, when the Balagrand season has started, when you have made it to the Gladius circuit, and when you have tried it out yourself, just in case you're not testing out the friendlies. I'm making this video knowing that uh, a lot of people will not have played enough friendlies to kind of like get the gist of this meta. But I do want to kind of like forewarn a lot of people because it is going to be fairly heavy gotcha meta. 
as I mentioned, the champions before uh, that are borderline unbeatable and regular champions that you never think are good defenders will be messing you up. Champions that uh, are, you know, good defenders typically will get exponentially better by spamming their special attacks. Like, you know, you give Mr. Sinister much more power, he's going to be spamming level 1s, reducing your ability accuracy by 100%, or just degening you with his level 1 degens. And even Kate Bishop is like a fairly tricky defender in this meta because she's going to be consistently spamming special attacks. And uh, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be significantly harder to deal with her than most people think. Just about any Mystic Champion, unless you have like major power control, is going to be an insane defender because as soon as you activate a special attack that will nullify all your buffs from typically you will have quite few placebo buffs on you and you're just going to die so mystic champions without strong power control or buff immune champion are just going to be completely unmanageable and uh, it just creates these complete rng dependent scenarios like to a point where it doesn't matter how you play. Like, I have won so many matches by getting KO'd and dealing 30% of my opponent's health bar to them because my opponent died only dealing 15%. As in, like, not even finishing the fights. And that's, like, a commonplace practice. I can uh, show it in history. Obviously, as time goes, I'm kind of getting adjusted to the fights more, but quite often you'll notice, like, matchups like this where you know you finish with half health or 30 percent health and you win and then you will notice matchups like yeah you've i finished with 40 percent health and my opponent just get completely ko'd and uh that's gonna happen a lot uh as i said as i was practicing these more and more uh you know, you kind of learn and pick up a thing or two and you test out new counters and that's fine. And that is part of the game that I like. Like here, yeah. winning, winning, just winning. Okay, my opponent had an awful match there, but um, yeah. Bullseye, does bullseye things. Bullseye is going to be insane. And then I got completely wrecked by the serpent who's perfectly balanced. And then this is the last round. And this is how a lot of matches are going to look like. Um, this is, I believe, victory track now that I'm talking about. But uh, yeah, friendlies, it's, it's again, I win by dealing half opponent's health. <laughs> then this is like what all, most people will kind of expect. Uh, you know, again, win by, you know, just having dealt a bit more damage. And, and, and that's not what I think the community wants or needs. And again, on a personal level, I'm not going to, you know, you know, whip up some sort of flares and say this is going to be an emergency. It's like... I can deal with a meta like this, where half of my matches will end up with me getting KO'd, but, you know, potentially doing slightly better or worse than the opponent, and the entire draft is effectively just trying to trap your opponent. But the question is whether this is something that's good for the game, that appeals to the community, that would make this game more popular, that would make more people play Valgrounds. And I will unequivocally say no. <laughs> I, I think Obama's making a mistake in this matter. But let me know what you guys think, and I'll catch you guys soon. Bye bye. Hello there, guys, and welcome back to the channel. So, we have all the information about the